I will do what uh, we do in the National Conference of Black Political Scientists, and I will uh, use something like a gavel and call our meeting to order. This is the first part of our national meeting of the Association for the Study of Black Women in Politics. Um, Nicole Alexander Floyd, one of the co-founders of that organization, is sitting right there. Can you just kind of wave your arm so people know who you are? Many years ago, uh, Nicole Alexander Floyd and Rose Brewer came together. Harris. Sorry, excuse Rose me. Harris. Rose Harris, excuse me. I'm going to let you tell the history, but they came together and decided that we needed an organization for folks who were doing black women in politics, and particularly black women. And they have been meeting um, since their founding at the National Conference of Black Political Scientists as a caucus, you know, small business meetings, at the Western Political Science, the Midwestern Political Science, at any space possible, creating space for black women in politics, researchers to come together and talk with each other. And um, about two years ago, I talked with Julia Jordan Zachary and Nicole Alexander Floyd and said, how would you feel about us doing a meeting of ASBWP here at Irvine? And I got immediately unequivocal support and generosity and suggestions about who should be there and how we should do it and what the shape and scope of it um, should be. And so I, I can't move any further without just thanking them for um, being willing to share um, this organization and all of its initiatives and goals with us here at UC Irvine. Many of you know uh, Dr. Catherine Tate, and um, she was the senior black woman political scientist here for many, many, many years. And many of you all also know her story and what her journey was like here. I think it is only fitting that because of the complexity of her journey and um, the rockiness and hardness of it, that ASBWP come to this place and plant a seed that recognizes what we do and the value of what we do and that we know the value of what we do. Okay, so a couple of orderly business kinds of things. I'm going to um, walk you through um, the acknowledgments of the people who have been our co-sponsors and co-participants in making this event happen and give a couple of logistical updates about the schedule. And if you have any questions at any time during my uh, brief presentation, please will you just wave, a, wave your arm, okay? So I'm gonna read a long list of names. Special thanks go to Nahum Chandler, Jasmine Robledo, Rena Carvalho, Casey Ning, LaShonda Carter, Paul Pham, Netta Moyeti, Molly Collins, Armand Demerchian, the University of California Consortium for Black Studies in California, the Second Century Fund of the American Political Science Association, Centennial Center for Political Science and Public Affairs, the University of California Office of the President, Vice Provost for Diversity and Engagement, the Department of Women's and Gender Studies at Rutgers University, Mississippi State Valley University, Dr. Francio Wilson, Dr. Nicole Alexander Floyd, Dr. Kathy Stromile Golden, Tamara Austin, Julia Lupton, Amanda Swain, X Black Women Daily, the UCI Black Student Union, the National Conference of Black Political Scientists, the UCLA African Studies Center and International Institute, UCI's School of Humanities, School of Social Sciences, Graduate Division, School of Social Ecology, School of Education, School of Law, School of Nursing, School of Medicine, School of the Arts, the Associate Dean of the School of Law, the Director of Public Health, the UCI Library's 50th Anniversary Project Historian, the Archivist for the Southeast Asian Archive and Regional History, the Office of Equal Opportunity and Diversity, the Office of the Vice Chancellor of Student Affairs, the Women's Caucus for Political Science and APSA Caucus, the New Narratives Initiative, the International Excellence Programs, the Office of Undergraduate Research Opportunities, Career Center, Cross-Cultural Center, Humanities Commons, Vice Provost for Academic Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion, the African American Student Experience Committee, Associated Students, uh, UCI, Ant Eater TV, the Humanities Research Institute, the Center for the Study of Democracy, 
Political Science Department, Gender and Sexuality Studies Department, Criminology, Law and Society, History, African American Studies, Culture and Theory, English, Political Science, Illuminations, the Chancellor's Arts and Culture Initiative, the Cross Cultural Center, and Selena Cardenas, Michaela Maciel, Elize Santos, Mercy Maradiaga, Bryant Parker, Shane Almanasi, Louis Brent, Ashley Jacket, Elisa Macareg, Tatiana Walton, Kayla Boyden, Ashley Montgomery, Shantice Laurent, Rachel Lane, Stephanie Perlman, Lynette Banag Morillo, Carmen Vickers, Sandra Johnson, Cheryl Flores, Destiny Joshua, and many others whose research, determination, and wisdom is deeply valued. Let's give them a round of applause. Especially for the student volunteers, um, I'm just grateful that they come from families you know, where they said it's an okay thing to participate in a collective project, even if it's not necessarily something that's going to, you know, it's not named after you. But there are so many people on this campus who understand what it is that we're trying to do as Association for the Study of Black Women in Politics, and I wanted to make sure to name those people. We have really great friends. LaShonda, how am I doing for time? Okay, that's fine. <laughs> The most essential thing, bathrooms. There are bathrooms in this building. Um, they are not ADA compliant or gender inclusive, but of course you are welcome to use them. And they are, um, where are the bathrooms in this building? They're right, up, they're right up the stairs, they're in this building. The ones that are ADA um, compliant and also gender inclusive are at the Career Center, which is the building right next door. So you don't have to go any stairs, you can just kind of walk that way. Um, why are we doing the oral histories? Um, if you're one of the student oral historians, you have a green folder. Is that correct? A green folder. If you open it, your green folder, this is for the oral historians, and we're calling everyone student oral historians. Some of these students are postdocs and new faculty members, because a lot can happen in the you know, time of planning a program to actually getting it. And so we tried to capture as much of that data as we could in here. but. Um, so these are our junior scholars who are going to be conducting the oral histories. When you look in the left-hand side, you will notice that the research questions have changed, right? Not substantially, but there's two research questions in particular that have been revised based on feedback from the Institutional Review Board, okay? You also notice that there's a photo consent form. Uh, you need to make sure to look at that documentation sometime today so that it can kind of flow off of your tongue. Why are we doing this? It's really uh, recognized by everyone when you bring people together to present on their research that that's a research gathering. But if you also make sure to expand everyone there, their methods, their ability to do a new method, to, to interact, to practice a new method, and such an important method, particularly for black women's politics of oral histories, we are not only sharing our research, but together we're making new research happen during this conference meeting. So that's why we're doing the oral histories. Um, there will be welcomes from people from the UCI campus during most meals. So feel free to mill around or take the break time or walk if you need to, but know that people from this campus will be speaking to just try to welcome you and really let you know that they are happy that you're here. Um, there will be photos taken uh, throughout, and if you're standing here, and we're gonna ask people when they're uh, presenting, I actually have a point of, of a clarification, Molly, can people present from there or do they have to present from here? And that's fine for recording. But if you happen to be standing from the podium, make sure that you're really as much as possible uh, into this microphone, because we won't be mic'd like we were last night. Uh, I wanted to make sure to thank the artist who made the beautiful cover art for our program, Kayla Lacey. This is original, original artwork. Um, and those of you who have already gotten a chance to meet Dushima Onguz, I'll just mention her name, Dushima Onguze. Not everybody here has gotten a chance to meet her, but those of you who have gotten a chance to meet her, um, congratulations for meeting that wonderful lady. And if you don't know who she is, can you, if you've met Dushima Onguze, put your hand up and just wave your hand. Put it up really high. 
make sure that you ask these people, who is Dushima Onguzi? Yeah. Okay, shut it down. Throughout, the, throughout this meeting, we will be inviting people to remember Black Lives Matter LA, in particular, Black Lives Matter LA. And if you have uh, checks or donations, Melina Abdullah is on the program and will be here tomorrow, and the organization can use your help. They can use your assistance. So please, if you have that, go right ahead. We are going to um, welcome now uh, several of the scholars from campus and our leadership on campus. And so I'm gonna actually have them um, come up and join at the table. And so that is uh, Doug Haynes, Vice Provost of Academic Equity, Diversity and Inclusion, the Director of Advance and the Professor of History. Bill Maurer, Dean, School of Social Sciences and a Professor of Anthropology and Law. George Van Den Abele, Dean, School of Humanities, Professor, Comparative Literature and English and Dean Janice Austin, the Assistant Dean of Admissions and Student Financial Services in the School of Law. And they're gonna be doing our first welcome. Thank you so much and uh, welcome to Scandal in Real Time, the National Conference on Black Women, Politics and Oral History. We're just going out of order so that I need to be somewhere else at nine o'clock. <laughs> Right. You know, it is a happy Thursday. I walk into this room and it's just, it's not something you see on this campus all the time, ever. And so it is an extraordinary, powerful moment for me to be here in the Cross Center, under the, the painting of Dr. White, honoring Tiffany, LaShondra, my colleagues here, and then just to see you all walking on this campus. So with that, I'm honored and blessed this morning on a Thursday morning. It is indeed a happy day. Um, as Tiffany said, I'm Janice Austin. I'm the Assistant Dean of Admissions and Student Financial Services at the Law School. And what a community of, of, of scholars and friends we have over there. And I understand at least three of them are going to grace you today or tomorrow. Song, uh, Karn, and Michelle Goodman will all be with you as well. Um, just a little bit about the Law School, because I think it's an extraordinary academic unit on this campus. It really says something about it the mission and the leadership of this university and the commitment behind it. We're only seven years old at the law school. We were the last of the public law schools to open here in Southern California. Um, though the plans had been in the works about 40 years to open a law school, a uh, public law school in California. Um, things just started really happening in the, in the mid-2000s. Um, by 2009, we opened our doors. And in just our brief history, we have achieved not only some academic honors across the country, but also in terms of the diversity that we have as a law school. 50% um, of our students are self-identified students of color. Uh, we look at our faculty, and I, this is the fifth law school that I've had the opportunity to, to work at in some capacity. There are more black women on our faculty uh, than any other law school I've been in the country. Now, it says something about it. But it's really there, and obviously, it says something about the lack of within the profession. Yes. But at the same time, it says something about the, uh, the collective will of this institution and our ability to attract that group of scholars here with us, and as well as myself and my staff. And I look at my staff because I think one of the first things that's so important in any admissions office is that the staff has to reflect the level of diversity as well. And so by every measure, um, that's important to me and what we do with the work at the law school. And then in addition to my work there, I'm also president of the Black Faculty and Staff Association here on campus. And that is a very vibrant organization that we have continually tried to rekindle and reach out both to not the per just the professional level and the faculty, but also the support staff, the people who, are, who, who come to work every day, who drive to Los Angeles, who put their head down, go to work, and go home to their families. It's also those communities on this campus of black folks that we care about. In addition to that, also at the medical school. So this evening, uh, no, sorry, tomorrow evening, you all will be able to attend our gala, which is our, our annual event. It's a fundraising, uh, it's a spectacular event. It's going to be the largest that we've ever had. Close to 400 people will be there. So I'm delighted that we were able to provide tables for you and look forward to seeing you all there. So I'm just going to say, again, it's a happy Thursday to see you all. And uh, I look forward to seeing you more on campus today and definitely at the gala tonight, a uh, Friday night. And, uh, Tiffany, this is spectacular. Uh, Well, I want to add my thank you and welcome to Janice Tiffany. Uh, my name is Doug Haynes. I'm a professor of history and the vice provost for academic equity, diversity, and inclusion. 
And it is a compulsive habit of mine as, a, as an instructor that I write my notes down. So I'll be glancing at my notes. Uh, uh, so don't be surprised. Um, I want to warmly welcome each of you to the Scandal in Real Time National Conference of the Association for the Study of Black Women in Politics. I want to share with you the well wishes of our Executive Vice Chancellor, Enrique Lavernia, who regrets that he could not be here to welcome you in person. It is a privilege for UCI to serve as the venue and host for this national meeting for a variety of reasons. First and foremost, it is a gathering of the Association for the Study of Black Women in Politics. The very existence of the association underscores the ways in which disciplines, in this case political science, produces marginality through its priorities of intellectual labor as reflected in undergraduate syllabi, graduate admissions decisions, dissertation projects, dissemination of new knowledge in the flagship venues of the field, as well as higher and promotion decisions, and finally, recognition in the field in the form of awards and citations. Of course, this is neither an accident nor exceptional, but rather indicative of the history of the social production of fields or communities of the competent. The social production of fields by policing the racial and gender boundaries of expertise. Just as this is the case for the American Political Science Association in its historical formation, it is also the case for the American Historical Association and the American Medical Association, just to name a few. Rather than understanding the place and role of black women in politics as an accidental occurrence or necessarily less important, the association seeks to illuminate the spaces strategies and dimensions of leadership of their involvement in politics in the present as well as in the past. So it is a privilege for this campus to participate in recognizing and rewarding and in a word enabling the indispensable labor of black women in politics. There's a second reason why the campus is privileged to host this national meeting. The title is a provocation insofar that it seeks to move past the distorting media representations of black women in politics and in turn focuses on the political work, intervention and scholarship of black women who are not necessarily in the glare of the media or fit the programming priorities of network or cable broadcasting. Of course, as you know, there is only one Olivia Pope, and there is only one scandal. But it's important to remember that Rhonda Rhimes is dramatizing loosely the life of a singular political fixer inside the Beltway. As an aside, it is ironic that the arc of the rise and fall of Wake Forest University political science scientist Dr. Melissa Harris on NSNBC provides a cautionary tale of the perilous space that the network or cable broadcasting space can be in real time. Still, this distinction between the distorting lens of the media and the actual labor is all the more important because of the actual presence of black women in politics. This is not new, of course. Just think of families, churches, schools and businesses, or movements for fair housing, the minimum wage, prison reform, or educational equity. Black women launch the Black Lives Matter movement, increasingly lead campus black student unions, our voices in the House of Representatives, namely Maxine Waters and Karen Bass from the California delegation or in the case of California Attorney General Kamala Harris campaigning for the soon to be vacated Senate seat of Barbara Boxer. There's a third reason why this campus is privileged to host this meeting. 
The conference is as much about sharing new research and insights as it is about training and mentoring scholars of the future through oral histories. As a historian myself, oral histories provide a valuable archival resource for rendering the texture of decision making. I have no doubt that the proposed conference volume, Conversations with Black Women in Politics, New Models for Measuring Impact and Meaning, will become a defining moment in political science, chiefly for making legible the barriers and hurdles to new scholarship. There's a fourth reason, not too many more after this. <laughs> this conference is a powerful reminder that the participation of black women in the, in the academy is still quite recent, particularly in political science. Dr. Jewel Prestige, an honorary founder of the association, passed away about two years ago. Dr. Prestige was the first African-American woman to receive a PhD from an American Department of Political Science in 1951. UCI appointed its first African-American woman in political science in the early 1990s. Professor Catherine Tate, a prodigious scholar, remained here for more than a decade before moving on to Brown University. During her tenure, the department marked another milestone. It graduated its first African-American woman from the doctoral program in political science, Dr. Zara Ahmad, who now is the director of the program in civic and community engagement. The second is my colleague in African-American studies, Professor Tiffany willoughby Harard. You can clap. <laughs> And the third is Davin Phoenix, and I want to acknowledge Dean Maurer for his just resourceful creativity in recruiting a diverse faculty. Joining Tiffany and Davin are other faculty who are engaged in relevant critical scholarship. And I just want to mention some of them. They include Brian Sykes, who will be forming a part of the seminar and his colleague Jeff Ward in Criminology, Law, and Society. And as Janice Austin mentioned at the beginning, a remarkable collection of law school faculty is just astounding, including Michelle Goodwin, Elsong Richardson, Karen Goffertson, as well as Mario Barnes. And more recently in the Department of Sociology, Damian Sorgener, and in education, Constance Elo. Finally, I want to take this opportunity to acknowledge my colleague, Professor Tif Tiffany willoughby Harard, who has played an indispensable role in organizing this national conference and the work of her culture and theory graduate student, Lashonda Renee Carter. Please acknowledge them. And Molly Collins. <laughs> Welcome and thank you for coming. Thank you very much. Um, I'm Bill Maurer. I'm the Dean of Social Sciences here at UC Irvine, and it's a pleasure to welcome you. Doug just mentioned something about my resourceful creativity. Yeah. What that means is that um, I, we break rules and then we ask for forgiveness later. <laughs> but, but also, just for some, but just for some perspective, um, when I became the dean three years ago, there was one African-American faculty member in the School of Social Sciences. One. Now, there are six. Hooray! And there's two more on the way. Okay, but that's still, even if we recruit these two more, that would be eight out of 160. So don't praise me till we're done. Um, also, as, uh, as the Dean of the School of Social Sciences, the kind of topic and motivation for this conference is personal, right? Um, the social sciences have a lot to answer for. Audre Lorde, quote, what does it mean when the tools of a racist patriarchy are used to examine the fruits of that same patriarchy? Discipline of political science. It means that only the most narrow parameters of change are possible or allowable. 
So when um, Tiffany and LaShonda first approached me about lending the school support to this event, I jumped at it. And I jumped at it for two interrelated reasons. One is that it provides the opportunity to reframe the social scientific discussion of race and gender that despite decades of critical black feminist scholarship and organizing, still slot, and we joked about this when they came into my office, still slot black women under the sign of social problem rather than political actor. Um, <clears throat> so believe me, as someone who has to represent and advocate for the social sciences broadly conceived in a whole bunch of different contexts, I have seen firsthand how nothing is more comforting to power than the allocation of certain people's and agendas and positionings as social, meaning pathological and in need of remediation, instead of political, and thus debating, dissenting, active subjects. Audre Lorde again, what does it mean when the tools of a racist patriarchy are used to examine the fruits of that same patriarchy? Can you ask right. that question again? What yeah. does it mean when the tools of a racist patriarchy are used to examine the fruits of that same patriarchy? One more time. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> so second, and that's my second point, my second point is, um, as a social scientist who cares very deeply about the history of the disciplines of social science and what they have done in the world, how they have moved in the world, sometimes not moving in the right direction, um, I was thrilled that this conference would not just be a presentation of research, but the production of new research and the production of new methods, new tools. So I was completely gladdened by the project of using this site, using this venue to collect the oral histories of participants, um, create new methods and new tools um, going back to the discussion of tools, and also creating a bond between today's present and its pasts and the new generation that's assembled here um, to take up its own future and to start doing things with some of the new tools that I know you will all develop. So I wish you a very productive couple of days, some good hard work, and I thank the Association for the Study of Black Women in Politics for allowing us to be your hosts. Have a great time and enjoy. Thank you all. I'll be brief. Uh, my name is George. I'm the Dean of uh, Humanities. And uh, we're particularly proud to be the home of the uh, most recent Department of African American Studies in the United States. We just became a department within the last year. And uh, it's something I've been trying to make happen since I got here three years ago. And it's great. You know, there's a lot of programs out there and programs that don't hold FTE and programs that uh, don't have budgets and programs that don't have staff. You know, when you get to a department, it's something that's more secure. And so I'm really proud to see that uh, we've been able to make that happen. And it is um, a department that's housed in the humanities, but we work with the social sciences, with the arts, uh, with the professional schools in a wide variety of ways, many affiliated faculty there. Um, and that's part of the context and meaning for this conference happening now here at UC Irvine. And I'm particularly grateful again to Professor Tiffany Willoughby Harrard for helping put this all together along with LaShonda and Molly. Uh, thank you so much. Um, and I want us to say not to embarrass Tiffany at all, but one of my jobs is to review merit promotion cases, and uh, she's just recently tenured, and her case basically, yeah, and I say, yeah, I'm not done. <laughs> it, 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 that's just not get, getting tenure. And she knocked the ball out of the park, as they say. This is the strongest tenure case I have seen in decades. It's really amazing. Very powerful book. You know, every category, the service, the research, the teaching quality, it's everything. And it just goes to show that, you know, how powerful the generation of scholars is becoming as we move along. And part of that is this, uh, the intergenerational quality of this conference, which struck me when uh, Tiffany and Lashana came to talk to me about this the first time that I thought this was so innovative. We talk a lot about intersectionality between race, class, and gender, 
But one of the ways in which um, society, I guess that's a problem, <laughs> uh, is structured in the United States is there's a siloing by age. Once you take people out of family environments, I mean, it, there's, there's really stratification. And I think this is an important frontier to resist and overcome. Um, and I think building that into a conference here means that the next generation of scholars interacts with the so many prestigious senior scholars who've come here today. You know, Shelby Lewis, Kamala Price, Evelyn Simon, many, many, I can go down this whole list of this conference. It just blows me away, the quality of people that we have in this room um, for the next couple of days to discuss it, along with some really passionate, exciting, smart younger people who will move this along in ways. And I want to add a question, a statement, because uh, oral history um, you know, it's a much maligned field, and I know because I've done a lot of it myself. But like that, that, and and in fact, it's really crucial, not just because it's, it's it's creating a record. It is the archive that will tell the stories in the future. When we do work in old history, and I work a lot in in uh, pre-colonial and post-colonial history, and uh, that's always the question. Where are the documents? Where is the archive? You're trying to find that and tell stories about folks who stories were not recorded. And so recording the story, making those documents is one of the most important things. Secondly, we are in a university and we thought this university is about passing things on from one generation to the next, about education, the education of those who will come after us. And this is again, a really crucial part. And so I, I'm really thrilled to see that and uh, this becomes not just a one-off conference that happens, it's really fun for two, three days, but it will continue through that research agenda, through that set of interactions and ongoing projects. And I thank all of you for coming here and making that possible. Thank you. We have a couple of really quick announcements. The um, social media um, hashtag. hashtag and uh, what is the other? The Twitter handle is, <laughs> I'm sorry, is at Scandal in Real. Not with uh, time on the end, just at Scandal in Real. Also, if you look on the back of your um, name tag, some of you have dots or it says full meal. That means that you are, um, um, to accompany us to all of the meals. For the rest of you, you are welcome to join us in the meals that uh, convene in this room. And uh, for the oral historians, your room assignments are being printed in the full format. And the questions as well. Thank you. You're welcome to stay. Thank you.